Welcome back everybody to episode 2 of the tutorial series. So the first thing we're going to need to do is actually add these assets that are from the RPG generic. So if you didn't already, you need to go in there and make sure that you have the Atlas PNG. So the first thing that we need to go ahead and do is change the sprite mode from single to multiple. And then we can go into the sprite editor and click apply. And then I'll drag that over here. And you can see that what we need to do is go and click on slice and do what we did before, which is grid by uh, cell size this time. And actually the pixel size is just 16 and 16 and you can click, click slice right there. So if you remember before we already did this, but now we're doing this again because uh, this image right here actually has a lot more of the tiles that we're going to need. What we were using before was just some of the generic tiles that they have set up for you, but this has a full picture already sort of ready for you. However, there is some issue. You can see right here, it's not perfectly aligned correctly. And yeah, other than that, I think it's pretty good. And we're not really going to use it for these other things, just really the static images or the static tiles that we're going to be using. So you can click apply which might take a while because this actually has to create all of the separate tiles now. So we just need to wait for that. Okay, I think it might be done. And now if I click here, you can see that there's a million different tiles all showing up. So what we can do is go back to the tile palette and then click create new palette. And then I'll just call this RPG generic full and then click create and we can just save it in the same folder here. And then what we can do is we can drag this whole thing over here and select the same folder if we want to. Now again, this is also going to take a bit of time because we have to create all the t tiles here as well, which are technically a separate object from just like the PNG images. And after that finishes, then we'll get uh, just the entire image but in a tile format, so then we can actually click and then bring them in. Okay, they're finally all added in here as you can see. So now we actually have our two different tile sets available to us, which is going to be really great. The first thing that we can go ahead and do is open up uh, the, the different tile sets, or not tile sets, sorry, the different grids that we have here, which is where we actually place our tiles on. And what I can do is I can change the focus. So now we can see that these are all in the collidable, which is actually what we don't want. And this is because the collidable is for tiles that our character can collide with, and we don't want him colliding with the ground. So let's go ahead and go to the erase tool and let's erase all those tiles. Now we can go back to the background and what we can do is we can drag in a whole bunch of these to get a scene going and I'm just going to place this right here and then I'm going to start just adding some other pieces so well that doesn't line up correctly but let's try this and let's just try making a little path for him to walk across here okay yeah that looks pretty good so what I'm going to do now is just fill the rest in with grass and I can click off of that camera, or I can click on the gizmos to click off of the camera. So you can see here that it's a bit easier to see now. So if I just go through and add a bunch of that, you can see that we sort of have a little scene put together now that I can run across. Now we still have some issues over here, which we'll get to later. But for now, what we should do is go into the collidable. And what we can do here is we can say, well, if we have a lake, we want that to be collidable because we don't want him to be able to walk over it. So then I can just go ahead and click right here. And now this is in the uh, collidable layer. And what we want to do is we want to add a component and we want to add the tile map collider 2D. So this means that any tile that's in collidable will cause a collision for the main character when he runs into it. But in order to actually make that work, we also have to add 
a collider to the main character. So for now, let's just add a box collider 2D. And I need to turn Gizmos back on and click on edit so we can actually see this come up. So you can sort of see this uh, green collidable tile map coming up. Well, first let's just actually disable these and then turn off the tile map here. And then I'll go back and now you can actually see a little bit more clearly where the character is. And then we can actually drag this down to make it the correct size. So we don't want this to collide over his entire body because we want him to be able to walk in front of objects and make it look good. So after doing that, I think it's set up well and we can turn everything else back on now. All right, awesome. Now let's go ahead and try walking into that pool down there. You can see that I can still walk over it and that's for a few different reasons. The first reason is that we haven't really set up the code correctly to handle this. Right now our code is not taking physics into account so it's just walking over everything. So the second reason is that we also need to add a rigid body here. So let's add a rigid body 2D and what we have to do is we have to set the gravity to zero since our game is top down it's not a action side platformer sort of game where you would want to have gravity. So we fixed one issue, but we haven't fixed the other issue. So let's go ahead and actually open up our script again. Okay, we will have a little bit more coding to do. So let's get right into that. The first thing that we're going to need to do is adjust this move speed because it's starting to get pretty high. So when I was testing it out, I just got 0.8 F as a good speed and we put the F here to indicate that it's a float. Next, we're also going to want to have access to that rigid body 2D that we created. So you can see here that I just did the same thing we sort of did with the sprite renderer. We're just saying that there exists a rigid body 2D in this variable body and once we're in the awake we can actually access it. So then we can do body equals git component and then we want to get the rigid body 2D and save it in that variable. And then what we need to do is we need to get rid of this because this translate function is based on the transform and it has nothing to do with physics. So in order to use physics we're going to access the body because the physics mechanics are sort of stored in the rigid body. And then it actually has its own velocity component, so we want to access that, and then we want to set it to a new vector 2. And the variables for this vector 2 are going to be the horizontal input, and we want to multiply that by the move speed, and then same thing for the vertical input. Perfect. Now after that, everything else should have to remain the same because we still want to flip it. Now let's go ahead and press play and see how it works when we try to collide with the collision tile map parts. Okay, so actually we're getting an error here, so let's see what it is. There is no rigid body 2D attached to your hero. Oh, I was adding these to the main camera. Whoops. Yeah, so I just need to go back and add these to the main character instead. So, first of all, let's just reset this to the correct size. I'm so sorry about that. And then, let's actually go and add the rigid body as well and then set that to zero okay now if I press play you can see that I can move around again and you can see that I collide here but look at that it's still acting like this is sort of a 2d game where if you run into something you can get knocked down in order to fix that it's actually super simple all we have to do is go into the constraints 
and then freeze the rotation. So now that actually won't happen. All right, so that's looking pretty good, but you can see here that this scene is still not looking that great. And that's because we didn't go and do what we did before, way back in episode one, which was actually set this to be point, no filter. So now that I clicked that, you can see that this looks a heck of a lot better. All right, awesome. So what do we need to work on next? Well, the next thing to work on is probably add even a little bit more to this scene. So you can see here that there's a river right here, but how is that actually going to work? How we want this to work is that you can't collide with this part of the river, but you can actually walk across right here, which is going to require a bit more ingenuity when it comes to how we place these blocks. How I'm going to do it is place all of these in the background and also these in the background as well as these in the background but what you'll see is and we don't need these two what you'll see is we're going to place these different blocks inside of collidable because this part of the water needs to be the collidable part of the water so now if I go back to the focusing on the tile map you can see that it's working how we want it to we want him to be able to walk across right here but not to these different parts so that's all great but the only problem is right now a lot of this is off camera so you can see that the camera is right here and even if the character moves the camera isn't going to move so how do we fix that well what we can do is we can actually download a special asset to create a more custom camera and what you have to do is go to your package manager and then go and click on unity registry and then what you should be able to find is something called cinemachine and we actually want to install this tool because what it will allow us to do is to create virtual cameras and all kinds of different cameras but we'll just stick to the real basics and just create a camera that can follow the player based on some simple properties all right this will also take a little bit to download but once it's done you should be good and right off the bat you can see that I now have a new tab up here that says Cinemachine so what I want to do is I want to create a 2D camera and then I clicked that and I can move that up here and then on the main camera you can see that there's now something called the Cinemachine Brain so we're still going to use this main camera but we just also now have what's called the virtual camera and so we need to change a few properties in this virtual camera to make it work right. What we want to do is we want to have this virtual camera follow our main character, the hero. So I'm going to drag it over to here on the follow position. And now that you can see, I can save this and let's click play and see what exactly happens. So you can see this new window sort of come up on top, this new overlay and you can see that as I move around the camera is following this and if I were to reach all the way out here the camera would just instantly uh, move over to that position so that's kind of the most basic sort of uh, Cinemachine camera that you should have for your game but we still have a, a few quick things that we need to fix with it so one thing that we need to fix is when we click play we can actually test and s and see what these changes will do so you can see that this is sort of like the X and Y position on the screen and we can actually set a bias to the X and Y and we can set the soft zone here and make it much smaller but I don't really care too much about those different things what I care about is how large the view of the camera is right now so if I go to lens, what we actually want to do is we want to set the orthographic size to 1. And the reason that we want to do this is because if we're using a value lower than 1, we can actually start to have pix issues with like the pixels and the tiles inside our game, which we really don't want. And also having a wider field of view is a pretty good thing for a game like this, so you can sort of see the enemies that are coming up on the screen. 
Anyway, that's why I think setting the view to 1 is a good idea. But for your project, you can set it to whatever you want. Now to finish off, I'm just going to add a few more tiles to sort of get the level looking a little bit nicer. But other than that, we're basically completely done for this episode. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see